What's good everyone, my name is Ayas, and today I'll be reviewing Kowloon Generic Romance by Jun Maezuki. Her first work, After the Rain, was pretty popular and received an anime adaptation, although personally I couldn't really get into it because I found the premise to be a little questionable, even if the content wasn't necessarily as creepy as you'd expect it to be. Kowloon Generic Romance, however, caught my eye right away, it has some pretty incredible artwork right off the bat. It feels very cozy and comforting. The backgrounds feel really confined and tight, and the details in the background are incredible. There's so many tiny details there, and it all results in this feeling of familiarity and intimacy with the city. There's this idea of nostalgia being brought up very often in this series, and nostalgic is a perfect word to use to describe how this series makes you feel. The characters have great designs too, instantly recognizable standout characters, and the initial romance between the main characters is pretty sweet. Kudo is exactly the type of character I like. He's careless, he's messy, he's wild, but at the same time he's very enthusiastic and passionate. This isn't the case for the entire series, but if we're talking about right at the start, Kudo was a fairly easy character to like. Even easier to like is Reiko. Like, God damn, just like, look at her. Like, I don't even need to say anything. Not only is she fine as fuck, she also has a pretty cute romance going on with Kudo at the start of the series. Everything at the start of the series led me to be pretty excited for where the series was gonna go, but then it sort of started to get shaky. Like the title says, Kowloon Generic Romance, it's kind of saying that this won't be a generic romance. And although it wasn't, there was tons of mystery and drama incorporated in here, I can't really say that it's for the good of this series. At first, the plot does seem interesting. Kowloon is a place which actually existed in the past, and these people are all living in it. At least that's what they think. In reality, there's tons of fishy things going on, people losing their memories, people maybe being duplicated, Kowloon actually being demolished like it was in real life, and tons of other things just going on behind the scenes. The biggest problem with the story really is the pacing. Everything just happens so slowly. And while this is a slice of life and there's tons of slice of life moments, it feels like the mystery and drama moments somehow just come out of nowhere. They'll just be like a few chapters of people doing mundane everyday tasks. And then all of a sudden somebody comes in and is like, you're not even a real person. Not only is the story constantly switching from a mystery to a slice of life, the characters are constantly switching back and forth between personalities. Kudo goes from this super chill, carefree dude to a dude who looks like he's about to shoot up a school. Now I get the point that he's hiding some secrets and there's things that he hasn't told everybody in Kowloon, but this dude literally looks like he's going to commit several heinous war crimes. He looks like a war criminal. This isn't like just normal, I'm hiding like a couple secrets. Reiko is a character who's super interesting in the past, filled with personality, seems really fun. But in the present, Reiko has nothing. She has no personality. And I know this is something the author intended and did on purpose because she only has like a year's worth of memories, making her effectively like one years old mentally or something like that. But still, whenever we get to Reiko, she just seems so plain and boring. It's kind of tough to sit with her on the screen for as long as she is. Miyuki also is kind of someone who switches back and forth. He goes from this guy who's like very snaky, creepy, slimy, to apparently being a super caring and considerate person when he's around his lover. The whole thing between Miyuki and his lover felt super fan y to me, although I'm sure the Fujiyoshis will love this. But every time they're on screen, they're either having sex, they're kissing, whatever, or they're eating bananas and hot dogs. Like, I don't know, this whole thing just felt kind of demeaning to me, especially when no other characters in this series were shown in a sexual relationship except the gay couple. Also, I'm sure some people think their romance is very cute, but honestly, it's a pretty horrible relationship. This guy literally physically assaulted the other dude, and one of them is super clingy, one of them super distant. The whole relationship just seems like not that great. After about like 20 to 30 chapters, the series does start to get a lot worse in most aspects. The problem is though, these chapters start to get really bad really quickly. They start to fall into this cycle of making this chapter where somebody goes through some sort of struggle or something. 
And they'll end it off with these cheesy, just horrible one-liners, which just make me cringe. Like, you know, like fake diamonds can sparkle and they act like it's such a big life-changing thing. And there's just so many of these, it's just hard to sit through. A lot of the messaging here is very basic and surface level, but the author kind of acts like these characters are saying something mind-blowing in every scene, which makes it kind of hard to enjoy. Even like really simple messages like, just be yourself, bro. Like, Karaji is literally just told to be herself. And there's like several panels, lots of pages, big, big messages, zoom-ins. Like, it's so over the top for such a simple message. When the actual plot about Kowloon and what actually happened there appears, I do find it pretty interesting. But the rough part is it doesn't really show up too often. There's just generally like a long drought followed with a little bit of plot here and there. Also, I really worry about this Feng Shui stuff. It's been mentioned several times and I have a strong feeling that it will be the explanation behind all this, which I'll probably find pretty disappointing. This random dude in the background gave this whole explanation on how Feng Shui could actually be the reason why this was all happening. And his explanation is so logically flawed. It's, it was actually kind of infuriating to read. He was talking about how he, Feng Shui is very similar to archaeology because it's based on patterns and stuff. And that was like one of the dumbest arguments I've ever heard. Like, are we going to trust a Feng Shui master to build a house? There's no chance, no shot he's doing that. When I first started this series, I actually thought it was pretty good, but at this point it's very hard to read through and although I do have some hope that it could get better because the plot itself isn't that bad, so maybe it'll go somewhere interesting, but for now I'm really just not enjoying it. I'm feeling like a decent to strong 5. Thank you everyone for watching, let me know what you thought about this series down below. Leave a like, leave comments, leave whatever you want. I'll see you guys in the next one.